Hey guys, Marcus, uh, Marcus from Bible Truth. I want to um, show you how um, we want to test the spirits today. We want I want to show you how people who claim that they're grace believers actually teach works. And uh, a lot of people think that if they don't say they're teaching works, they're not teaching works. But what people do is they divide up your salvation is what they end up doing. They say, well, you know, of course you're saved by grace through faith, but the the so-called Christian walk, you know, that's to prove your maturity. And you're going to hear. Renee say something about, well, walking in the spirit is how you're putting on, is you're putting off the old man, but it has nothing to do with salvation. So she's saying putting off, if walking in the spirit is verifying that you're putting off the old man. Now, the problem with that statement in of itself is she says walking in the spirit is verification that you're putting off the old man that makes no sense because it says if any man be in Christ he's a new creature old things the old man is passed away behold all things are become new you're a new creature that's a new man you're a new man in Christ so to say you're putting it off that's just Renee teaching works but she doesn't say works so uh, therefore she you, she says I'm not teaching works I'm gonna show you what she's talking what I'm talking about because I don't want you guys to see it but listen to this okay well the first let me give you this so the topic was help preacher said if i don't have fruit of the spirit i'm not saved lordship indoctrination and so i want you guys to understand this is how slick the devil is the devil will say will 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 falsely identify build up a straw man and say well yeah fruit of the spirit if anyone tells you that you're walking in the spirit that that's that's teaching works but no that's not teaching works because when you're saved you're a spiritual child of god and you can't walk in the flesh Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Your life is actually hidden God. The problem is people like Renee don't actually believe in being born again. That's why she thinks, well, the way that it works is my spirit is supposed to co op my, my flesh somehow cooperates with my spirit. That's what she's teaching. She's basically teaching, well, the way that you progressively get there is by walking in the quote unquote spirit. But sometimes you walk in the spirit and sometimes you're not quite in the spirit. You're, you get in the flesh to go back from being in the spirit to in the flesh is to, like saying you can lose your salvation, guys. Because it says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God. Dwelling. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. It says they that are in the flesh can't please God. OK. Renee doesn't believe that. Okay, so let's listen to Renee. I'm going to go back. I've, ear, I've marked some of these things. You won't be able to see my marks because Renee blocks me automatically. Quote, fruit, okay, your listen. own, uh, to verify your salvation, you're looking in the wrong place. Our so she's saying, this sounds good, right? She says, well, fruit don't verify your salvation. If you're looking at fruit to verify your salvation, you're looking in the wrong place. Now, the question you guys need to ask yourself is, one, what is fruit? What does it mean when the scripture says fruit? I know it talks about the attributes of the fruit of the Spirit, but what are the fruits of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit are actually talking about the children of God. But because Renee doesn't believe the children of the flesh are not the children of God, and God's called the Father of Spirits, let me show you this, she despises, she despises anything that talks about salvation as being spiritual. She doesn't like it. Listen to this. Furthermore, we've had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? This is basically just saying, hey, you guys should be born again. The children of the flesh aren't children of God. You should be born again by the Father of spirits. And then it says, each produces after its kind. That which is born of flesh is flesh. Then the flesh can't please God. That which is born of spirit is spirit. God's called the Father of spirits. If you have the spirit of life, you live. You, I give it to them eternal life. They shall never perish. So it's basically saying he's the father of spirits. Just to prove to you, because you know you have to be born again of the incorruptible seed, the word of God, the words that I speak to their spirit in their life, and tells you, of his own will begot he us, of his own will begot he us. Does it say anything about you doing works? No. Of his own will, no, God is patient, not willing that any should perish, my sheep never perish. Begot he us with the word of truth. The word of truth is synonymous with the word of God. Because it says you've got to be born again of the incorruptible seed. What do you think the seed, the word of God, produces? It produces fruit. 
But it's not talking about flesh, children of the flesh. It's talking about spiritual children of God. So be God he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his, cre of his creatures. That's why it says, if any man, listen. I want to show you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That's what it's talking about, guys. So if you're born again, you are the fruit. God's called the father of spirits. So when Renee's using this, she's being very deceptive, as always. And she's making it seem like just because someone else is teaching works, she's saying, well, they're teaching works. I'm not teaching works. But she's actually teaching works. She's teaching works without saying she's teaching works. This is uh, the way the devil works. The devil works in very extreme degrees. And then that way you won't catch the subtlety. He'll have one false prophet be very blatant and says, oh, you got to have work. They only have another false prophet says, I'm not teaching works. But then they're actually teaching works. Let me, let me show you. Okay. Assurance of salvation. Yep, you guessed it. Another talking head. Wow, out I can't believe a commercial again. Hundreds or even thousands per month. Re Renee, you can't turn off the commercials. The risen Jesus. Our assurance of salvation is the risen Jesus, not our fruit. Um, she says, not our fruit. What's so deceptive about this is it's basically saying if you're a child of the flesh, because it's saying if you're of the flesh, you're a corrupt fruit, right? Because you perish, you know, perishable fruit born of perishable seed. And he's saying, but if you're of the spirit, you're not corrupt fruit because you've been born of the incorruptible seed, the word of God, the word of truth. Renee is conflating the two and she's doing this purposely, guys. She's just been blinded to this point, probably because she but she's this is this is basic stuff here. The fruit of the spirit is evidence that we are walking in the spirit once we're saved she's teaching works fruit of the spirit is evidence that you're walking in the spirit once you're saved what's the problem with that what's the problem with that the fruit of the spirit is evidence that your walk is evidence what evidence is renee talking about fruit of the spirit is evidence that you're walking in the spirit what ask renee what evidence are you talking about what is the evidence that I need to have that I'm walking in the spirit? Because if I'm not in the spirit, guys, you know what that means if you're not in the spirit? It means you're not saved. Uh, 2 Peter 4, 6, I think it is. Uh, did I type something wrong? 1 oh, Peter 4, 6, my bad. Okay. If you're not in the spirit, you're not saved. Listen. For for this cause was the gospel preached to them that are dead, that they may be judged according to men. Where? In the flesh. If you're in the flesh, you're still under condemnation because of sin. Because what which sin? What, what sin are you talking about? Are you talking about the law, Marcus? No. The sin of unbelief. If you're still in the flesh, it means you haven't believed the gospel. John 16, 9. And the sin is the sin of unbelief. Of sin because they believe not on me. You're believing God, who is a spirit named Jesus, gives you the free gift of eternal life if you believe that the man who's not God, the man Jesus, same name, but he's not God, who died, because only mortals can die, died for your sins, paid the legal sin debt with his blood, and he paid that legal sin debt, and it says if you believe that you're not going to be justified by the law, given that he paid the legal sin debt on your behalf, and you believe God, who is merciful, to give you the free gift of eternal life, then God will give you that gift, understanding that God quickened the mortal body of the man Jesus raised from the dead, because God quickens the mortal body because he comes in the likeness of sinful flesh. And the same body that died with the wounds in the hand is the same body that was raised. That's why it had the wounds in the hands when it was raised. So you can't sit there and say that's a perfect, that's our so-called perfect body. That's what Renee wants you to believe. Renee wants you to believe, oh, the body with the wounds in the hands, that's the perfect body. No, because she's trying to keep the flesh. God quickened that mortal body. So it's of sin because they believe not on me. So the judgment 
is because you don't believe the gospel. That's what it's saying. It says, it tells you, for this cause was the gospel preached to them that are dead, that they may be judged according to man. Where? In the flesh. But if you're born again, a new creature of incredible seed, you live according to God. Where? Father, spirits, and live in the spirit. Now, when you believe, you've been born again by the incorruptible seed, begotten by the word of truth, and you are a what? A kind of first fruits of his creatures. You're a spiritual child of God. Now, what makes it so bad is it just tells you. It just tells Renee outright, but Renee refuses to believe that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the what? Begot he us by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. It's clearly a spiritual children, right? And so she's talking about to verify. Verify what? What also makes it horrible when she's talking about verify, the reason why you can't verify looking at the flesh, Renee, and you'll never be able to verify by the flesh. What? Well, I, guess you, I guess actually you can. Because if you're still in the flesh, you perish. And the flesh perishes. That's why we're no longer of the flesh. We're of the spirit. We're dead to the flesh. And our life, live according to God in the spirit, is hid. How are you going to verify my life is hid in God? Okay? My life is hid in God. So, how are you going to verify? You say, well, why, Marcus, why is she teaching this thing? Why is Renee being so sneaky? Why would she go through the trouble of doing that. She claims to be a grace believer. Why doesn't she just teach these very obvious lessons? Well, because Renee believes in the chosen race. And when you believe in the chosen race, they have to convince you that you're not the Israel of God. It tells you very clearly in Romans 9, 6, it's not as though the word of God had taken none effect. Remember, he got he us by the word of truth that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Well, the word of God, it tells you The Bible is very clear. The parable is this, the seed is the word of God, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. It's not that the word of God had taken an effect. Guess what? They didn't believe the gospel. They're not born again. And since they didn't believe, they're not his sheep. So when he says, I am come but for the lost sheep of the house of hold of Israel, he's saying he's searching for what? Faith. From faith to faith, the just shall live according to God in the spirit by faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. And they that are in the flesh can't please God. Why do you think that they that are in the flesh can't please God, guys? Given that you just read in 1 Peter 4, 6, that you're judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. If you don't believe the gospel, where do you remain? You remain in the flesh. You're not born again, a new creature in Christ of the spirit. That's why if you're in the flesh, either you haven't heard the gospel or you've rejected the gospel. Right? Either way, they in the flesh can't please God, and children of the flesh aren't children of God. That's why it says, it's not until the word of God takes effect. Then here's the reason why Renee's lying to you. They're not all Israel, which are of Israel. It's telling you there's an Israel of God, and there's a synagogue in the Israel of Satan, which is of this world, which are children of the flesh. So what they're trying to do, I'm just going to cut to the chase of what they're trying to do. They're trying to claim that there's this stratification of people according to the flesh. This is basically teaching like eugenics. That God has a so-called chosen race or a ethnicity, a chosen ethnicity, according to the flesh, where somehow they're just a little bit more pleasing in their flesh, even though it says they that are in the flesh can't please God and the children of the flesh aren't children of God. It says neither because they're the seed of Abraham, because Abraham, guess what? Guess what Abraham did, guys? The gospel preached before unto Abraham. Do you think Abraham believed the gospel and was born again by the word of truth begotten by God? To be a kind of first fruits of his creatures? Well, it says Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. And it says the spirit is life because of... So we know Abraham believed the gospel preached before unto him, right? And Isaac also believed the gospel because it said, In Isaac shall thy seed be called. So it says, In Isaac. Now, you're born again of the incorruptible seed. And we just read in Colossians 2 that your life is hid in God. The problem Renee's going to have, and the reason why she's teaching that... Well, you know, based on your so-called Christian walk, and she's saying, that's got no, this is not salvation. Yes, it is salvation. Because if your life is hidden in God, God is righteous. God is righteous all the time. God is not, there's never a point where God is not righteous. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Remember, your life is hid in God. You're, you are the incorruptible, you're born of the incorruptible seed, and you're found in who? In him. Your life is hidden. Listen. 
for his seed, his fruit, his children. That's why it says there's many members, one body. Now, the trick that Renee and these guys are trying to do, they're trying to say anytime you see the word Bible, the body in the church, they basically want you to dismiss the spiritual body. They're basically saying the spiritual body is not enough. Meaning being found in God, who's a spirit, is not enough. That's why it says John in uh, John 4, 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth, and they in the flesh can't please God. Renee doesn't like that. She believes the Trinity. She believes the flesh, which, which died, clearly only, only mortals can die, whom God raised from the dead. She's trying to say that flesh is God. That's what the Trinity teaches. It's nonsensical, right? It says, his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. And that's why it says, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So his seed remaineth in him, and Isaac is born again. So therefore, Isaac's not in the flesh, but in the what? Spirit. His life is hid in God. So basically, it's saying, that is, they, it's talking about Israel, talking about Abraham and Isaac. It tells you, it's not like, the, it's not the children of the flesh. It's not Abraham's seed according to the flesh and blood. And it's not saying, oh, mix the corrupt seed with the incorruptible seed. Because it tells you of the seed of God, it tells you. Here's, here's what it tells you. I'm going to show you guys. Because God is this. For he that saw to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. It's saying it's not like flesh sold into the, uh, Abraham sold into the flesh of his wife or some, some other woman, some other person, child of the flesh, and then it reaped uh, life everlasting. No, so when, when Abraham had Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, according to the flesh, they were all of corrupt seed. They all had to be born again of the incorruptible seed, the word of God, the word of truth that liveth and abideth forever. And you live according to God, as we just saw in 1 Peter 4, 6, in the spirit, not in the flesh. So the scriptures are very clear. And it says, but he that soweth to his, so I'm sorry, to the spirit, the spirit, it's the spirit that quickeneth, that giveth life to flesh, brought nothing, shall of the spirit reap, live according to God in the spirit, life everlasting. My sheep, I give it to them eternal life. So it's telling you, look, the true Israel are who? The children of God. It says the children of the flesh are not the children of God. The, the, the opposite of the flesh is since the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, and there in the flesh can't please God. Obviously, if the children of the flesh are not the children of God, the opposite is the children of the spirit are the fruit of the spirit. These are, these are, the, these, these are, these are the children of God. Thank you, Lord. Okay? So that's very obvious, guys. Now, what we're saying, this is not, this is not teaching works. It's basically saying you're, you have the righteousness of God because your life is hid in God. It's telling you, look, let me, let's, let's, look, let's look at this. Colossians 3.3, 3, right? Your life is hid in God, right? Let's look at this. Your life is hid in God. If you're born again, God is your righteousness. God is. you got to understand this. If any man be in Christ, but it's saying... There's, there's, there's Christ the man, mortal, who died for the sins of the whole world. That mortal body was raised by God, who's a spirit, right? The eternal Savior. And is letting you know, oh, there's a distinction, there's a difference. That's why you must discern the body. When they talk about taking so-called communion and people not discerning the body, it's saying that people aren't discerning the body. And Renee's trying to say, oh, there's no such thing as a quote-unquote... Uh, 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 I don't believe in the spiritual. I don't believe that we're in a spiritual. But that's what Renee's trying to teach. So it says, listen, and be found in him. It doesn't say be found in them. Found in him. But it says you're in Christ. But it says when you're in Christ, when you're born again, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And so you're going to say to yourself, well, if I'm in Christ, why does it say I'm not in the flesh, but in the spirit? Because it's telling you there's a difference between the mediator, the man Christ Jesus of flesh and bones, and God a spirit named Jesus. There's a dis there's a difference. God's not made of a woman, made under the law, curses anyone hanging on the tree. God didn't die. God isn't tired. Doesn't get sleepy. Doesn't eat dead fish. This is what it's <laughs> this is what it's telling you. Now, if, if this sounds crazy to you, me telling you that God's not a man, that he shall lie, neither son of man, that he should repent. He doesn't get tired, sleepy, hungry. And you're like, in that part, you're like, well, uh, if 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 you truly don't see the basic contradiction if you think god gets tired hungry sleepy dies like a man like a mortal because only mortals can only per, only you have to, to, to can immortal can immortals die no immortals can't die right okay that's the very the immortal is the antithesis of being mortal okay god is immortal and it says when you're born again he's remember is christ in you the hope of glory and what did jesus say i'll never leave you nor forsake you 
And it's talking about when you believe the gospel, it says, Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or the hearing of faith. But it says, As many as received them. So you're receiving Christ, but guess what? He comes in the likeness of what? Sinful flesh. If I come to you on the street, or anyone who's believed the gospel, who's no longer of the flesh but had their old man quickened because God quickened our old man of the flesh, that which you can see. God can come in my likeness. You believe the gospel. God will come in your likeness. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter if you're male, female, black, white, short, tall, have a deformity in a wheelchair. God will come in the likeness of your sinful flesh. But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. It's just that that dead body has been quickened. And that's all they can see is your dead body. They can't see the eternal body with many members because we are hid in God. We're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. We're the first fruits of his creatures, right? And we're fruit of the spirit. And each produces after his kind. And he's called the father of spirits. Okay? So it says we're found in him not having our own righteousness. Because there's many of us in him. I, I'm not the, am I the only fruit? Am I the only one who's a child of God? You think I'm the only one who's believed? We know Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Solomon, all these, John, Peter. We know all these people believe. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So, since the beginning, all the people who believed are born of the incorruptible seed and they're of fruit. And they've been fruitful by preaching the gospel, the word of God, which lives in the Bible, and doing what? Multiplying. But, you got to understand, we don't add to God's righteousness. God is righteous all on his own. God is righteous all on his own. It's not like when I got saved and I was born again of the spirit. It's not like, oh, now I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm adding to God. No, I don't add to God. I can't take away from God. God is righteous all on his own. I can't take away from him. I can't add to him. Right? Just because I'm a new creature in him, God is right. Don't think like God was missing and then he's like, oh, when you got saved, uh, uh, you added something. No, he's like, no, my right. You, you're found in me having my righteousness. I wasn't like, it wasn't like God's righteousness plus a little of your, no, it's none of your righteous. That's why it says you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And it tells you there's none righteous. No, not one. Only God is righteous. And then it tells you you're found in him not having your own righteousness, which is of the law. Because if you're under the law, you're still in the flesh. And the law is a schoolmaster to show you that you need to be saved by grace through faith. And it says, but that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith. From faith to faith to just shall live by faith. And when it says, found in him not having mine own righteousness. Guys, what's so crazy about this? You go to Romans 8. And it tells you, look. If you're still in the flesh, you're under the law. So they that are in the flesh can't please God. Then it tells you, look. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling you. The spirit of God dwelling you is talking about Christ in you, the hope of, hope of glory. Remember, you receive Christ. as means received him. Receive ye the what? Spirit by the works of the law of the hearing of faith. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. There's another way of saying this. is saying, if you're still in the flesh, that means you don't have the spirit of truth in you. And that means you haven't been born again. And it says, if Christ, notice it says, Spirit of Christ, and it says, if Christ be in you, that's how you know to receive you the Spirit. So it's making a distinction between God, who is the Spirit, and the flesh of the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who died, who's immortal, right? It says, if Christ be in you, the body is dead. Which body is dead? Well, it just said, you're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. We just read Colossians 3, says, you're dead, meaning your old man is dead, and your life, new creature, is hid with Christ and God. You're in the body. Many members. One body. Right? And it says. But the spirit. Is life. Because of righteousness. But then it says this. this well here's this. That's the main point. The spirit is life. Because of what? Righteousness. Found in him. Having not mine own. Righteousness. What's righteous? The spirit is life. Because of righteousness. God is a spirit. And they that worship him. Must worship him in spirit. And, tr and in truth. Begot he us by the word of truth. That we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. And he's. And Renee's teaching to doing this video, and she's trying to throw you off because she doesn't want, she's like, fruit of the spirit. Right? This is, she's trying to throw you off. This, uh, her whole way that she's going about this is to throw you off. This is what she's doing. She's trying to throw you off. 
She's trying to throw you off the fact that your children of the flesh aren't children of God. That the, God doesn't have a chosen race. Uh, she's trying to throw you off the fact that when you send money to her on Patreon, you're not doing the work of God. All the stuff you do in your flesh is not, is not doesn't please God. In fact, if you're still in the flesh, that means you're still, uh, have, you haven't believed the gospel. And that means you're not a child of God because you're, you're a fruit of the flesh. You're not a fruit of the spirit. This is all this is to all the stuff that this woman is doing is to throw you off. It's amazing what she said. Now, listen to what Renee goes on to say. Now, I've showed you how it says if you're born of God, you can't sin because your life is hidden in God. I just showed you how when you're born again, you're found in God, having not your own righteousness. And it says the spirit is life because of righteousness. Right. And it says you're in Christ, but it says you're in the spirit. Clearly, it's making a distinction. Now, if you're worried or thinking about the flesh, and, you, and I get it, you may be fearful because all you heard was the lie of the Trinity. And you're saying, but what about the flesh? It's very hard for me to believe because they just told me that's the mystery of the so-called Trinity. No, they're using the word mystery deceitfully. The mystery is all of us who are not in the flesh, but we come in the likeness of sinful flesh that we've been quickened. That's the mystery. The mystery is... Who has Jesus in them? Who has Christ in them, the hope of glory in them? That's the mystery. Because you should know that is not the children of the children of the flesh are not the children of God, as God clearly told you. But he comes in the likeness of sinful flesh, and you can't tell by you don't know who he's in by looking at the outward appearance. It says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, right? The spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead. Now, when it says God raised Jesus from the dead, how was he raised? By the power of the what? spirit the flesh is weak the spirit. god is not half weak half strong the spirit of him that raised up jesus from the dead he that raised up christ from the dead who dies only mortals shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwells in you now it says we will do just as jesus did now this is where renee has a problem because you know the trinity teaches this thing called hypostatic union they say God is three distinct persons, but the second person of the Trinity, they say, is fully God, fully man, yet one person who's co-equal, co-eternal. Well, the one person, your your Trinity is messed up because how is he co-equal, co-eternal when it tells you that that body was a mortal body that was quickened by the Spirit? It was a mortal body, and it died, so it can't be co-eternal. So you can't count the flesh of Jesus as being God. Then what what's 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 crazy about it? I told you he comes in the likeness of sinful flesh, but it tells you this. I don't need it doing that. Okay. It tells you this. Because it's it's telling you, look, God is not a man that he should lie, neither son of man that he should repent. Don't get confused by the fact that he he uses the title son of man because he comes in the likeness knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle even as our Lord Jesus Christ had showed me put off this my tabernacle so God is putting off himself why would God who's righteous don't you guys agree that God is righteous why would God ever put off the tabernacle why would he put off anything put off himself the tabernacle is like saying a uh, temple you know how it says by temple he spake of his body what body or tabernacle is he putting off? He's clearly putting off the mortal flesh, which he quickened. That's what he's talking about, because God comes in the likeness of sinful flesh. Now, this put off. Let's go back to Colossians 3. I want to show you, I think it's Colossians 3, 9. I want to show you something. This is what Renee is teaching. What Renee is basically saying, she's saying, I don't believe this stuff is automatic. She's basically saying, I don't believe you're automatically righteous. In which she also, because it's basically saying, we're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And in Colossians 3, it tells you that your life is hidden God. And it's basically saying, now that you're saved, God works in you to save others. I mean, that's why it says, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. So it says life, your life is hid. So if my life is hid in God. And then it says Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Why? Because we're in him and he's in us. <laughs> right? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Since you seek, 
a proof of Christ speaking in me, right? To reveal his son in me, right? That's what it's talking about. Christ in you, the hope of glory, right? Then it says, because we're going and giving the gospel to other people so that they can do what? Be born again also. And when they believe the gospel, they die to the old man, just like we died to the old man, right? Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. And what does it mean when it says that? It's talking about you are no longer a child of the flesh, but people will still see your old man. And they will identify with you as a brother according to the flesh. Right? Even though that's no more you. As Paul said, that's no more I. But you're going to you're going to persuade them. You're going to tell them that they need to deny themselves just as you denied yourself. Right? You're going to say, look, you're going to you're going to come to them as if you're in bondage with them. Right? Just like Moses went back into Egypt. He went back into Egypt as they saw him as an Egyptian in bondage. And he went back to tell them how they can be, quote unquote, delivered out of bondage. The bondage being what? Sin and death. And he, he says some people don't want to leave bondage because they they love Egypt and the treasures of Egypt. They esteem the treasures of Egypt greater than the the blessings of God. And so they refuse to believe the truth. So then they what? This is what Renee is doing. She just said, I'm going to pervert. I'm going to pretend that I'm here to bring deliverance, but I'm actually not. And so she's it's telling, it's telling you that when you go that, you're supposed to do what? You're supposed to destroy the old thing. Mortify the members upon your earth. It's not telling you to go out and literally kill them. Let me show you what it actually means. It's just telling you, look. It's telling you to destroy the works of the devil. Let me show you. Here's what it's telling you. It's telling you that it's warfare. It's, it's, it's telling you to... Let's see if I can find this. I don't know if this is in here the way I'm thinking it is. Right. Okay. It's telling you to cry aloud and spare not. It's like... Uh, what does it say? What does it say? Uh, cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Do you think this is teaching works? When it says show the house of Jacob their sins, what do you think it's talking about? The house. Temple, house, tabernacle. Cry aloud, spare not. Cry aloud, spare not. Well, let me show you guys. Let me, let me just go here. I'm going to have to come out of this and I'm going to come back to it. Remember how we talked about Egypt and we talked about God is basically saying the true Egypt is spiritual and it's a spiritual house. Renee doesn't want you to believe that. She really, Renee despises. Guys, listen. Ye also as lively stones are built up a what kind of house? Spiritual house. The gospels preach to them that are dead that they may be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. You've had fathers of your flesh which corrected you and they gave you gave them reverence. Shall you not much rather be in subjection to the father of spirits and live lively stones built up a what kind of house spiritual house a holy priesthood to offer up flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of god spiritual sacrifices living and that's what's what data in the flesh can't please god but spiritual living sacrifices i give unto them eternal life i take no pleasure in the death of the wicked that's acceptable to god by jesus christ that's what's acceptable it's acceptable that you believe the gospel deny yourself be born again. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. A new creature created in Christ. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And you're a lively stone, a spiritual stone in the spiritual house by house, temple, tabernacle, spiritual body, spiritual house of God. So he's saying, look, cry aloud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Lift up your voice. Who is my voice? Who am I, who am I lifting up? Who am I, who am I lifting up? Who am I lifting up? <clears throat> oh, since you seek, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you it is not weak, but is mighty. See, if he can come in me, if you believe the gospel, he can come in you. Because it's greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, right? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 
So we're crying aloud and sparing not. Preach the word in season and out of season. Why would we be preaching the word in season and out of season? Is it to bring forth corrupt fruit? Is, is the word of God corrupt? Oh, we're not like many. We're not like many who corrupt the word of God. Listen, listen. It's basically saying <laughs> you got to be born again. See, Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob all believe the gospel. And so when it's talking about this, Christ is mighty in you. And since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me and saying, cry aloud and spare not and lift your voice up like a trumpet. You guys have to think about what the scriptures are basically saying. The, the, the Bible is just basically saying Christ in us is the hope of glory. Christ in us is the hope of glory. And we have the Savior in us. The saved have the Savior in them. But if any man have not the Savior, then they're none of his. Because they don't have eternal life. As Jesus clearly told us, his sheep hear his voice. They believe. They, they hear it, And he gives unto them eternal life. Renee is basically trying to tell you, don't, don't believe that just because you believe the gospel, you're automatically righteous. Right? And they don't believe just because your life is in God that ever, all the works that God does in you are righteous works. Because it says it's God that worketh in us to do unto will of his good pleasure. So when it says cry aloud and spare not, it's basically saying don't spare any of those members who are upon the earth. Basically, that's all it's saying. It's just saying don't be a respecter of a person. Preach the gospel to everyone. Right? That's all it's saying. Cry aloud and spare not. It's saying preach the gospel to everyone because there's a fake Israel upon the earth and it's every single child of the flesh. Now, what these guys have tried to do, these, I, I'm going to call them what they are, these eugenicists, they're trying to tell you that, no, there's a special race line or ethnicity. This is all they're trying to do. They're trying to say, no, no, no. The way that we can save this lie is we can, we can say that God has a chosen people. And they said, you know, no one's going to believe us because we've been colonizing under the guise of white supremacy. So they say, you know what, the way that we can pretend that we've defeated white supremacy is we'll have a war in Europe and we'll kill some so-called people who look white and we'll say, well, they're not really white. They just look white. And then we'll just say, look, now we're done with racism because we had a war and defeated uh, Hitler, the archetype of, of, of white, white supremacy. That's what Hitler's supposed to represent, the archetype of white supremacy. And they did that after colonizing. And then they said, oh, now, now that we've duped uh, these suckers into believing that uh, we were uh, loyal to them based on so-called this thing that we made up called racism... Then they betrayed Europe and stabbed Europe in the back. They stabbed all these people in the back. And then they said, now we're going to make the, the pie shorter, but we're going to have to make a sacrifice. So they sacrificed six million just to trick people and to convince them that, hey, we've defeated white supremacy. Now when we do this stuff, it's charitable. They're still doing colonization. They're, they're still doing the same thing. They're still seeking global dominance. They love the world, the things in the world. Their treasures are... Where their treasure is there, where their heart is, that's where their treasure will also. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Meaning, what do you mean if they, any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him? Wait a minute. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. But if you have the Spirit, you're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Rene is trying to make it seem like you go from being in and out of the flesh. But listen to what it says. Listen. Listen to what it says, guys. Now, it says, I saw this. It says, it talks about, where does it talk about the members upon the earth? Yeah. It says, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, or in order to affection, evil, concupiscence, covetousness, which is, listen, idolatry. It's basically saying, if, for all the people who don't believe the gospel, who try to glory in the flesh, it's saying, you, you're, you're, the people who don't want to, quote, unquote, be born again, who don't believe they have to, quote, unquote, die to self, so to speak, meaning, be born again, old things have passed away. When I say passed away, if you say, oh, such and such passed away, what does that mean? That means that's a, way, that's a euphemism for saying the person died. Old things are passed away. And that's why it says up here, it says you're dead. You're dead. I've been crucified to the world and the world unto me. My kingdom is not of this world. I'm a new creature. I live according to God in the spirit. I'm not in the flesh, but in the spirit. God's called the father of spirits. It says all of us are found in him and he is in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Now we're strangers and foreigners in this kingdom because this is a kingdom of darkness and we have no fellowship with darkness. However, we come in the likeness of the children of the flesh. 
we come in the likeness of those who are still in bondage, quote, quote, Egypt. But we're here to do what? To destroy the works of the devil. Destroy the works of the devil. Who's the enemy that, we, that we're here to destroy? When it says cry aloud and spare not, you're thinking, don't think like Zionism. Don't think like papal bulls. Don't think like Islamic wars. Don't think of that kind of stuff, guys. Because remember, our kingdom is not of this world and we don't love the world. We're not fighting for the treasures of this world. When it says cry aloud and spare not, you got to think about the, the Bible differently than how you've been taught. It's saying don't spare anyone because what? Because God is patient, not willing that any should perish. God, it's God's desires that all men be saved. But he's not, he's not forcing them to believe. He's telling them today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. But he's saying, tell everyone. Cry aloud and spare not. He's saying, my grace is sufficient for every single... Guys, if every single person believe the gospel, God's saying there's room for everyone. Because you're, God's saying, you're born again into my kingdom. There's, I, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. What is what is what is lacking? What is uh, scarce? What is uh, woefully scarce is people who truly believe. And that's why you have fake, false, phony teachers like Renee Roland, Greg Jackson, Jack Smack and all these guys. Fake and phony frauds. They don't want you to believe that the righteousness of God is your righteous because you're found in him having not your own righteousness. Your righteousness is equal to God's righteousness because God is your righteousness. Your walk is equal to God's righteousness because God is your walk. God is the one who's working in you. So who is going to, are you going to call the work of God? He, he says, ye are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works and is God that worketh in you. Not talking about your flesh. Don't get confused. Not talking about your flesh. That flesh man is no more you. You're dead to that old man. And I'm not saying dead to that old man. I'm not talking like, well, okay. you. So so live like you're dead to the old man. That old stupidity. The, the old word salad. Just, just trying to confuse people. I'm not saying you say by works. But you should walk like you say. You know, this this just teaching works. Your life is hid in God. Your life is hidden in God. So it says, mortify there before your members upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness. Or, guys, you, this, tell, this is just saying, now that you've been saved, go back, cry aloud, spare not, save others with fear, pull them from the fire, hating you the garment spotted by the flesh. Right? It's saying, don't, don't, you know, just go out and, and tell other people. Don't be a respected person. That's all it's saying. It's just saying, that's all it's saying. For these things, so listen, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedient, those who Harden their heart to the truth, to the gospel. Remember the gospel is preached to them that are dead. They may be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. They in the flesh can't please God. So it says, if you don't believe without faith is impossible to please God. It says, you know, this is good will and pleasures to give you eternal, eternal life. But you're disobedient, unbelieving. In the which ye also walk. Listen, sometime when ye lived in them, when you were in the flesh. But we're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. When ye lived in them. Listen, but now, listen, but now ye also put off all these. Listen, listen, put off all these. Listen, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy community. Uh, Christ, in, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, I'm not in the flesh, but in the spirit. My life is hidden in God. Do you think this, uh, do you understand the, the heresy that Renee's teaching? Filthy communication out of your mouth. That's what she's doing. It is filthy communication coming out of her mouth. Lie not one to another. Can God lie? If, if it's God that worketh in you, can God lie? No, God cannot lie. God cannot lie. Lie not one to another. Seeing that, listen, Renee's like, well, why does this say that? If it's, if it's automatic, why would he say this? Renee's basically saying, no, you got to still do works. Listen, lie not one to another. Seeing that ye have put off the old man. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Listen, but you're like, but I'm still waiting for my glorified body. Didn't you see the spiritual house and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. Listen, 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 listen. See, here's the part. I'm going to show you another thing. Remember how we talked about the fake Israel and the true Israel? 
God is saying, I'm judging the world. And the, the judgment is that light came into the world and the darkness comprehended it not of sin because they believe not on me. It's saying these people who don't believe, they're willfully ignorant. And it says, and Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, remember he said, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, they follow me. Ye which have followed me in the what? Regeneration. Regeneration just means born again. Now, is it talking about doing works? No. It's saying when you regenerate it, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he what? Saved us. We followed in the regeneration to be saved. It's not telling you, uh, oh, to get saved, go down the street, take a left, then go right, and blah, blah, blah. No. It's saying you followed in the regeneration means you believe the gospel. That's all it's saying. By grace through faith you're saved, not of works lest any man should. But according to his mercy, he saved us by the, listen, by the washing of regeneration, and listen to this, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And put on, and put on the new man, which is renewed, what? Renewing in knowledge, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, that God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the what? Truth. What's the truth? God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth, after the image of him that created him. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Born after the what? Spirit. Not after the flesh. The beauty of this, and the reason why Renee's lying to you, is because she's not letting you know that Jesus is here now. He comes in the likeness of sinful flesh. Who's an antichrist? But he that denies that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He's He comes in the likeness of all of us who are no longer in the flesh because our mortal bodies have been quickened and it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. And it says that ye have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man, he comes in the likeness of the Son of Man, shall sit in the throne of his glory. Sit in the throne of his glory. Now what it says, it says, no flesh of glory before him. It says, he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. There's no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, not after the flesh. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, but after the spirit. Okay? Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. How so? We're preaching the gospel. Why? We thus judge. We thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. But who looks at the heart to determine whether a person believes? God. God is the one who has to declare you righteous. We are the ones who said there's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. We're the ones who said that all is sin and come short of the glory of God. And we understood that we need to be found in him having not our own righteousness. Right? So guys, this is beautiful. So you know regeneration. See, the judgment is going on now. It says the gospel is preached to them that are dead that they may be what? Judged according to men in the flesh. They're not all Israel, which are of Israel, the children of the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. So it says the Israel of God is all those who have been born again. See, we believe in replacement theology because we believe old things are passed away, replaced. Behold, all things have become new. But we're not trying to take the old corruption thing and mix it and hypostatically unify it with the incorruptible. We don't try to mix, quote unquote, flesh with spirit. That's what Rene Roland is trying to do. Let me show you guys. I mean, I, I got into this. I don't know if I'm going to play Renee. Too that much. doesn't verify salvation. That verifies your spiritual growth and maturity and walk. That verifies you're putting away the old man and walking in the new man. So she said that verifies you're putting away the old man and walking in the new man. It says, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. It says you put off, you have put off the old man with his deeds. Meaning you put off the old man with his deeds. That's why it's saying... Let me show you guys. You have put off, put off the old man with his deeds. That's why it says you're not in the flesh but in the spirit. But Renee's like, I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe that you're not in the flesh but in the spirit. Renee doesn't believe that. She really, she really, truly doesn't believe it. That's why it says you can't sin. Whosoever born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him. He cannot sin. He have put off the old man with his deeds. Who else talked about this? Romans seven. Romans 7, around, uh, I don't know, 16-ish. Uh, listen to this, listen. Listen to this. Paul says this, For that which I do I allow not, for what I would that do I not, but what I hate that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelt in me. What do you mean it's no more you that do it? I put off the old man with his deeds. I know that's all you can see is the flesh, but that's no, that's no more I. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. 
for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Who is that? Who, who, who can't do good? Uh, the old man the f of the flesh whom I put off with his deeds. Right? This is what he's talking about. This is Romans 7. Guys, you go right over to the next, to the very next verse. Then it says there's no condemnation. He that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Of them who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Right? After the image of him that created him. Because we're a new creature created in Christ. And so it says we don't walk in the flesh, we walk in the spirit. Our life, for the law of the spirit of for the law of the spirit of life in Christ that made me free from the law of what? Sin and death. So beautiful. And that's what and this this goes all the way down to Romans eight. They in the flesh can't please God, but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Oh, you've put off the old man with his deeds. You're in the spirit, and you've put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. Father of spirits, okay? When they can't she can't take it, guys. This woman can't stand it. Not that you're saved. Although, of course, you can't do that unless you're saved. So she's saying, well, as soon as you're saved, but of course you can't do that unless you're saved. So that's Renee teaching lies there. But here's the issue. Listen, listen what she says. You are looking at you to confirm your salvation, and you cannot do that. She just said that it verifies that you're putting off the old man and putting on the new man, but you can't do it unless you're saved, but the issue is that you're looking at yourself. But she says it's it's verifying. She just basically told her that you verify that you're putting off the old man and putting on the new man, which is making it seem like there's a process. Instead of it's like you're born again, a new creature created in Christ. She's like, you're putting off and then putting on. So that's contradiction number one. I mean, Renee is ridiculous. I'm a, I'm a, I, I, there's a lot more. Guys, you can listen to this whole video if you want. Let's, what's this other thing? Listen to this. Chapter four. Are you ready to unlock success beyond belief? creating more freedom and flow okay. Four, verse 19 uh let's start let's start at 17 this i say therefore and testify in the lord that you henceforth walk not as other gentiles walk so she said this is what i say and testify in the lord now if you're in the lord he that joined to the lord is one spirit and it says you're not in the flesh but in the spirit and you have put off the old man with his deeds listen to what renee this is how she's going to twist this guys in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding. In the vanity of their minds, having their minds darkened. A person who does, who's vain and their minds are darkened, is that a person who believes the gospel? No, of course not. Being darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the. Being alienated from the life of God. We just saw the spirit of life in Christ that made me free from the law of sin and death, live according to God in the spirit. They're alienated from the life. I mean, they don't have eternal life. Ignorance that is in them because of the blind. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves that God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. If our gospel be hid, it's hidden from those whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of that. Listen. This of their heart. So he's saying, you're not like that anymore. So don't walk. Right. You're a new creature and your life is hidden God. So he's saying, you're not like that. Now, let me show you something else that Renee's doing about this. Who is our walk, guys? Remember, our life is hidden God. Temple. And then God. Let's see, I'm sorry. The way I'm sitting here is not helping me. It says, "What agreement hath the temple of God with idols?" Meaning, remember how we just read in Colossians three? It says, "Which is idolatry? All those who don't believe is like they're loving the world, so they idolize the world and themselves, the earthy things, and so they refuse to believe the truth." And it says, "But for ye, all of us who are in the Spirit, live according to God in the Spirit. We are the temple of the living God." So God is the head, the savior of the body, and it's God that dwelleth in us to do unto will of his good pleasure. And he says it's God that worketh in us. And he says, and God has said, I, not they, will dwell in them. Because there's many members, but he's in every single one of us. And we're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And he says, I will dwell in them, plural, and walk in them. See, by his own will, by his own will, be God he us, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures of any man being christ he's a new creature you're not in the flesh he says i will dwell in them and listen to this part he that are born of god cannot sin because his seed remained him our life is hidden god and god is in us and walk in them so are you telling me that we can be in god who's light but walk in darkness i will be their god and they shall be my people this exposes the lie of of zionism it exposes the lie of the trinity it exposes anybody who's trying to glory in the flesh but renee doesn't like it walk like it see your walk has nothing to do with whether you were saved. These people. She says, so walk like it. So she's teaching works and she says, your walk has nothing to do with saved. These people. Listen, listen to what she's saying. 
they're already saved and they need to act like it. You see? They're already saved, but they need to act like it. What does that mean, guys? How can I act like my life is hid? So th this is what I'm saying with Renee. Renee doesn't believe the truth. And she sits there and pretends that she believes that you're saved by grace through faith. And we're found in him having our own righteousness. We're dead to the world. And our life is hid in God. So how, what do you mean act like it? By looking at the flesh? Are you so foolish? Have begun the spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? Listen to Renee. That's where the fruit of the spirit comes in. Now, if this stuff happened on She said that's where the fruit of the spirit. So she's saying the fruit of the spirit is acting like you're saved. That's just teaching works. And now listen to what she's about to say now. This is the part that just gives it away. And I am so baffled. And actually, I'm going to be frank. I'm so angry at people for believing this, 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 the lies that this woman tells you. Listen to what she says. She's basically going to say it's not automatic. Listen to what she says. What happened to Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness, found in him having not my own righteousness. God is my righteousness. You know, the spirit of the spirit is life because of righteousness. I, I will not give my glory unto another. So that's where we have to be found in him, having not our own righteousness. But listen. Like it. You see, that's he's saying you're not like that anymore. So don't walk like it. See, your walk has nothing to do with whether you were saved. These people are already saved. Your walk has nothing to do with your say whether you're saved. That's funny because if we don't have the spirit, God says, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And it says, we're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God dwelleth in us. So you have to have the savior in you to be saved. Because if you don't have the savior, you're not saved. He says, if any man has the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And he says, he's the one who walks in us and dwells in us. I mean, Renee is just such a, such a heretic because of the blindness of their heart so he's saying you're not like that anymore so don't walk like it see your walk has nothing to do with whether you were saved these people are already saved and they need to act like it you see that's where the fruit of the spirit comes in now if this so she's saying don't think the fruit of the spirit means you're a child of god that's what she's trying all notice all the stuff that she's doing she's doing this double-minded trying to split up salvation and say well okay how do i how do i get around this fruit of the spirit uh, I don't believe God's a spirit so if I say fruit of the spirit that exposes the trinity ooh each produces after his kind fruit of the spirit okay I'm just going to talk about the attributes of the spirit not the fact that God is a spirit God is love I'm not going to talk about you know he's called the father of spirits and says begot he us by the word of truth the words I speak to their spirit in their life it's a spirit that beareth witness the spirit is truth no I'm not going to teach that happened automatically let me ask you this listen, if listen, it, that's listen. where the fruit of the spirit comes in now if this stuff happened automatically let me ask you this if it automatically happened why is there so many epistles in this book instructing christians what they should and should not do to be successful as christians so basically she's telling you act like it and it's the verification that you're walking in the old man and she forgets, uh, Renee, what happened to her? Our life is hid in God. So Renee uses the word, you're positional. She doesn't really even believe you're actually in God. She's like, well, positionally. And I'm like, Renee, whosoever born of God did not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him. The him being God found in him, having not my own righteousness, he cannot sin. Our life is hid in God because he's born of God. God's called the father of the spirits. He says, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. How can you combine uh, darkness with light. How can you combine corruption with incorruption? How can you combine the flesh with the spirit? You can't. She's saying if it automatically happened. That's what he's basically saying. She doesn't believe that you're saved by grace through faith, not of works that any man should boast. She doesn't believe that God's walk and God's righteousness is sufficient. She's saying you got to help God out and you got to act like it. She's just teaching works. This is the most ridiculous thing. And people still don't catch what Renee is saying. This is recent. This is 12 days ago. As of this recording. What automatically happens. If you're really saved, you'll do this. If you're really saved, this happens. So she's trying to make it seem like what's crazy about it is she's basically saying, I'm not. Here's what here's this. Here's the here's the trick of the devil with Renee. She's basically saying, well, the other person who says this, they're teaching works. I'm not teaching works. This is what Renee. She's like, I'm not teaching works. But it doesn't, it's not automatic. She's basically saying it's not automatic. But she said it was how you verify that you're putting off the old man and putting on the new man. But if you're in the old man, that means you're not born again. The new man is created in righteousness, right? 
That's the new man, right? Let's see. Let me see if I can find. I think. Uh, I don't know. But maybe. There you go. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created, listen, created in righteousness and true holiness. <laughs> like, found in him having not mine own righteousness? Renee is just something else. If you're really saved, nothing. If you're really saved, the only difference is your put. So she's literally telling you to act like it. And now she's trying to pretend she's not teaching works. This is like a, this is like a, this is like a, a Jehovah Witness arguing with a, Mo, a, a Mormon. Position has changed in the sight of God. You went from. She says that your position has changed. Listen, listen to what she says. It happens if you're really saved. You'll do this. If you're really saved, this happens. If you're really saved, nothing. If you're really. If you're really saved, you're found in God, and God is righteous, and God all the works, all God's works are righteous, and since God is your works which is the spiritual work, not talking about your flesh, and you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, and your life is hidden in God, yeah, it automatically happens because it's God that worketh in you. It's, it's, it's the work of God. It's not, it's not our works. Renee just doesn't believe, she doesn't believe in being born again. That's the problem. Save the only difference is your position has changed in the sight of God. You went from being ungodly and unsaved and dead in your trespasses to being saved, highly favored in Christ, seated in lovely places, uh, with the promise of everlasting life, you have it now, and the hope that sits before you. That's all. It's to manifest that truth. Listen, to manifest that truth, what? Takes work on our part. It means takes work on our part. Guys, if you don't catch on to what this woman is telling you, to manifest that truth takes work on our part. To manifest that truth takes work on our part. The only thing Renee is manifesting is that she's still of the filthy, rotten flesh and that she's going to perish and go back to the dust like all flesh will perish and, and she'll return again to the dust. Only thing she's going to manifest is that she's the work of the devil and the works of her father. She will do. He was a murder from the beginning and abode not in the truth. It's the spirit that breath witness the spirit's truth. God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. She's manifesting right now for those who are willing to hear and listen and discern that she doesn't have the spirit of truth in her. That's what she's manifesting. Cooperation with the Holy Spirit. Cooperation. This is called hypostatic union, combining the spirit with the flesh. But it says you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Paul said, if I do the things that I would not, there's no more I that do it, but sin that dwelt in me. Then he says, the law of the spirit of life in Christ that made me free from the law of sin and death. He that are born of God cannot sin. Our life is hid in God. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And it tells you that the body of flesh is mortal. That's the only type of flesh there is, is mortal flesh. There's no eternal flesh. For instance, when Jesus says, calls to the lost man, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, all you who are working. Now she's going to try to teach that being following in the regeneration is following in the regeneration is works. We just saw this says not by works of righteousness we, we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing, regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost. Striving. I will give you rest. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Save people. Come to me for salvation. Come after me if you want to serve me. No, it's following the regeneration and it's God that worketh in us. So she's trying to teach works. That's all. Let me let me let me let me let me get out of here. I'm gonna I'm gonna show one more thing, guys. I'm gonna go. Uh, let's see, 26. The free grace words, but they don't like. The free grace message because they think it implies you can do whatever you want and be as sinful as you want, which no Christian. See, so no, here's our la my last point. She doesn't believe the righteousness of God is sufficient. She doesn't even believe that you're actually your life is hidden, God. That God is your righteousness, and then she's bringing up you can do whatever you want. But I thought you believe that Jesus paid the legal sin debt, you know, past, present, and future, and the only sin is of sin because they believe not on me, which proves that Renee doesn't even understand the basics of the gospel. Why is she bringing up what, what sin? You're talking about the law? Are you going back to the law now? You, you couldn't be justified by the law to begin with. So why are you talking about the law as a person who's so-called saved? Listen. It ever said, because they think it implies you can do whatever you want and be as sinful as you want, which no Christian ever said ever. 
So which proves she doesn't believe that your life is hidden God, which is where it says, Whosoever born of God did not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, being found in him, having him right. He cannot sin because he's born of God. So it says we're found in him. It says we're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And these guys are like, ooh, we can't have it be a spiritual body. So let's just say we don't have our glorified body yet. And let's just say, well, that's why we have to strive to put on, to verify that we're putting off and putting on. <laughs> I mean, what are you, are you, ha are you halfway, are you halfway, uh, dead and, 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 and halfway new or like what, what percentage of the old man have you taken off and how am I verifying? Do you regress? Do you like, oh man, you know, I, I put back on a lot of the old man today. Okay. Not without consequence. I just did a video on that. You can do whatever you want, but if you still follow your flesh and ignore the spirit and breathe the Holy Spirit, you will be a vessel of dishonor. If you follow your flesh. So it says his men are led by the spirit. And it says they in the flesh can't please God. And it says no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not in the flesh. She's saying you can still follow your flesh. Why is Renee teaching that? Because she can't let go of the fact that God doesn't have a chosen race. She's made God a white man. And she just doesn't believe in being born again. This is simple. It's as simple as that. Right? And let me tell you about people who walk out to the flesh. Remember we talked about idolatry being in the flesh basically it's like people who are disobedient to the gospel it's like they're uh, listen ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols even as you were led people who are walking after the flesh are still under the law the law is a schoolmaster to bring them unto Christ once they come to faith they're no longer under a schoolmaster We've come to faith. We're no longer under a schoolmaster. It talks about people who walk after the flesh. They, they perish. Renee is basically saying, yeah, 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 you'll perish. Jesus said, my sheep never perish, won't even see nor even taste death. Renee just doesn't even believe in being born again, guys. This is what the Trinity does for you. The Trinity says, well, yoke the flesh with the spirit, even though it says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. But it says they in the flesh can't please God. So who are the unbelievers? They are in the flesh who can't please God. They're not born again. It says, be you not an equally yoked. Well, we're found in him, having not our own righteousness. So our righteousness is equal to God because God is our righteousness. She's trying to make the flesh equal to God. Hence the Trinity, co-equal, co-eternal. She's making man equal to God. That's why she believes the Trinity. And she believes God's a white man. And she believes the children of the flesh are the children of God. And she believes in works. And she doesn't believe the, the blood of Jesus paid, even paid the legal sin debt. Because now she's talking about you if you can't sin all you want. So the woman's gone completely back to, to working the law. I thought she said he paid our legal sin debt. And people can't catch on to what Renee's doing. I'm going to have to let it go, guys. Look, uh, you know, if you got questions, please ask. But Renee, Renee Rowland is ridiculous. And all these guys are super ridiculous, guys. And, and um. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I, you know, if your 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 heart fails you, your heart fails you. You know, the world's dying because of heart failure. People aren't believing. You think pericarditis and myocarditis? No, it's, it's the hardness of the heart, guys. It's it's the unbelief of the truth. And what makes it so crazy is these are people coming out pretending that they believe the truth. They despise God so much that they made it their their mission to to block the kingdom for the lies of of of, of this world and the chosen race lie. And it's just amazing, but. Keep on, keep on believing those lies, guys, if you want.